in the Factory One Nation of Gamers 2016 Circuit, brought to you by Geico, Video Game Voters Network, and Cyber Power PC. My name is TJ. I am joined by Kriparian, and we're going to jump into the winner's match, Krip. What do you think of these guys' decks? Um, I like Dog's lineup. I like his uh, his strategy here. Um, just ban Druid. I mean, it's consistent. I mean, yep. we, we play decks that kind of lose the Druid, that are good against everything else. Everybody's playing Druid. We ban that. It's a pretty good deck overall anyway. I, um, I think it's a well-thought-out strategy, and he is in the winner's round, so it's worked out so far. All right, well, we'll have to see. Uh, before we jump into the first match, we do want to give you guys a quick reminder that uh, One Nation of Gamers and Guy Code Gaming will be at PAX East, which happens next weekend. So if you're uh, in the area, if you'll be attending PAX East at Boston, make sure you stop by uh, the booth. There will be a major there, which we will be casting on the uh, One Nation of Gamers channel next week. So uh, if you want to uh, uh, stop by, there will be some fan signings from some pro players from the uh, Guy Code Gaming teams. Um, and, of course, you can uh, watch the action on this channel next week for that major. It's a $10,000 major. So uh, there will also be lots of uh, um, prizes. We'll, we'll be releasing, o- Onog will be releasing a, a mobile app um, mm-hmm. where you can see when the pro players will be available for fan signings uh, at the booth. So make sure you, you keep your eyes peeled uh, for that as well. So head on over there if you're going to be at PAX East. I saw the the app a little bit, and uh, it's going to have some really cool functionality. It's going to integrate the uh, the tournament itself through it. It's going to be called the Onog Battle Zone app. I think we'll get uh, a few more details uh, pretty soon. They they missed their opportunity to call it Crip Watch. Uh, what a shame. shame! Yeah. What a shame! What a shame! They keep track of Crips every move uh, <laughs> using the Onog Battle Zone app. Nope, unfortunately. It'll be similar in functionality to that, but not, but not quite. Uh, but let's get into this game here. This is going to be game number one. Jab on the secret paladin and dog playing that uh, mid-range paladin, as we saw earlier. Yep. Uh, Noble Sacrifice is the secret right now, so it is going to trade for the Divine Shield here of the minibot. Uh, not a great trade, but you got to do what you got to do when you're playing secret paladin. Your first few turns are always going to have a few, uh, a few pretty bad plays in them. And, um, well, the rest looks pretty good so far, at least until turn five. Yeah. I would definitely say so. So, we didn't really get a chance to look at the lineups as a whole, but Dog has the more controlling lineup, and uh, Jab has a more, I want to call it more aggressively focused. Uh, with the Temple Mage, he also has, what was his third deck? Since his druid was banned this time, warlock. Both players warlock. banned each other's warlocks in the last uh, in the last match. Okay. Um, yeah. So Probably most likely do. it's going to be like a zoo deck. I think yeah. that overall is good for dog, but I think dog is going to struggle a little bit in this one. I know particularly in paladin games, the faster paladin deck wins out almost every single time because um, it's just that little bit of an edge that you have to begin taking the board. Now having consecration. Also is a pretty big factor in this. And we're going to see the card come down here. Yeah. So we'll have to see. Generally the faster deck wins. But I do believe that Dog is the only one playing board clears. So that is that is also a pretty big factor. Yeah, that ends up being a, a really big deal. And we'll see if he can maintain control of the board though. Because he doesn't have as consistent of like mid-game minions. Uh, Keeper of Oldman is great, but anti Healbot doesn't fight back on the board very much, especially since a lot of times this match doesn't come down to how much health you have, but uh, if you can wrestle control of the board. So, misses the juggle, unfortunately, Ooh. for him. I am surprised that he didn't play the Noble Sacrifice. After uh, seeing that he missed the juggle? Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, at all. Well, I guess there's a weapon and a minion, so he might have played the Noble Sacrifice if he did hit the juggle to protect the Knife Juggler. Mm -hmm. But now maybe he realizes that the Knife Juggler is going to die anyway. Hmm. Yeah, you just have to sequence it properly by attacking the minion first, but Dog Dog probably is doing that. Dog is playing very well tonight. Yeah, because if you attack the weapon first... Well, there's no Noble Sacrifice, yeah, yeah. But if there was... 
Let me Still, the dog has uh, quite the decision once again. Yeah, he can sort of heal his shield and minibot back up to a back up to a three three, or bring it up to a three three, uh, and just play the zombie chow for board control. Okay. Smack him in the face. I think there was also some reason to attack the divine shield of the minibot. Play around kings a little bit better. Not a lot better, but a little bit better. Yeah. Well, Dog is holding uh, Tyrion and True Silver once again. I think it's why True Silver has fallen out of favor a lot recently because. Um, with the game ending so quickly these days, like you very, very rarely see much play at 10 mana crystals. Um, it makes it so you just, there's just too many good weapons, and it makes it hard to play Tyrion, but you really want to play Tyrion because that's kind of on the better end of that. Mm -hmm. Now that should get fixed pretty uh, pretty quickly with Muster for Battle and Cog Hammer both being removed in the standard format, but uh, we're not there quite yet. <laughs> not there yet. Maybe a couple more weeks. I don't know, Crip. I might miss the these old decks in really? standard. You can always play them in wild. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's just not the same. Oh well. I'm one of the only ones. But I know that it's going to be good for a lot of long-term health. I'm thinking, well, that's a good target. That means... Aldor Peacekeeper has a really nice target on this board. The and Dog already has Jab at, you know, 10 health. Effectively, it's 15 health. Come to one. Yeah. And he will be able to trade in here. But you can put him to one, but effectively that'll be six because of the zombie chow. But there'll still be... He won't be able to take out the rest of his stuff. Because he can kill the zombie child, but he only have three damage left, but he will be able to play Tyrion. This is quite bad, though. What is the interaction? Can he attack zombie child with his weapon and not lose? I don't know. I don't think so. Because if he could, then that would have been... And if he doesn't... ...as safe as possible. And if he doesn't know for sure, I wouldn't risk it in a tournament setting. Yeah. Ooh. Aldor Peacekeeper. Um, didn't he take one extra damage on the Lothab there when he didn't have to? Yeah, he could have traded in the 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Oh well. So he's going to forego the Tyrion this turn to make sure that his opponent's Tyrion doesn't have nearly as much effectiveness. Also, this means that Dog should be able to get maximum value of the True Server Champion. Ooh. That's a big one. It is a big one, but I don't think he can even play it. If he plays it, he's dead. Yeah, he is. He's got to play the Slug Club set. Jab runs. Zero heals. So, he's going to be at three health for the rest of the game. Well, Dog runs double Zombie Chow. I don't believe that changes anything. Uh, no. He still has three attacks to get through. And smart play to kill off the slime instead of Tyrion. Because there's no. You want to force your opponent to sort of trade in. Uh, Bloodstream Kings actually takes this out of range, but he's still no. dead no matter what. It yeah, takes it out of range of just a swing, but then he has to deal with the Ashbringer, so either way he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, this is not going to work for, for Jab. Dog is going to take this pretty marginal, but um, at the same time, I think the only reason it was marginal is because Jab, Jab kept drawing all those big drops. Dog was mostly working off of his mid-range, which he has a lot more of. So I think I think Dog actually won while, while not being terribly lucky here. Yeah, that was just a, a decent hand, but both players seem to have decent hands. And Dog, once again, 
impressive stuff with this mid-range paladin. A, a, an interesting call to make. I, I remember playing mid-range paladin at the beginning of this season, so at the beginning of the April season, to to, to climb, and I was struggling a lot playing against uh, like hunters, and I was struggling a little bit against zoo yeah. warlocks too. I felt like I wasn't as consistent as secret paladin. Um, against Zoo, because if I didn't draw into my early game stuff, then I just lost. I didn't have those big swing turns later on. Even, like, Healbot would just delay me dying for a turn. So, uh, it's well, here we're gonna have to see if have success. Tempo Mage versus Demon Handlock. This is a bit more of a classical matchup. Uh, both of these decks have, have been around for quite some time, and we have seen a lot of back and forth from each of them. Yeah, a while ago it was a pretty popular matchup when both of these decks were a lot more popular on ladder. I want to say like a year ago. But it's sort of fallen out now because of Reno Warlock. A lot of players are a little bit reluctant to play uh, Handlock as opposed to Reno. Ooh, a Magma Rager. That's pretty good. I'd absolutely play that. Just gets Mortal Coiled, but you might as well play it. Yeah. I think it might actually get Hellfire. And the only reason not to play it is actually Hellfire, not necessarily Mortal Coil, because it always dies to Mortal Coil. Yeah. Ooh, but he would have been able to have such a juicy trade into that. Mm -hmm. He can have two more of them if he wants. Yeah. Could use all his resources to take out this Twilight Drake. But he is going to be able to trade the Mad Scientist in, so this is going to get both of his secrets up. Uh, he might be able to duplicate his he Magma Ragers. Yeah, he's got three secrets in the deck. He's got Counterspell, Duplicate, and Mirenti. Yeah. The old triple secret. Oh, loses that Ooh. coin flip. Looks like he's got Counterspell instead of Mirenti. That would have been a really nice Mirenti. Yeah. Push, he could push for so much more damage. Yeah. And Arcane Blast is basically a dead draw, because he can't even get through that Twilight Drake. My and Dog's just going through the ropes here. He, he he knows that without that Mirror Enmity, Jab's in a lot of trouble. He's going to give him some Magma Ragers. Oh, yeah. The best card here would be Flame Strike. How about that? How about that? And he draws Perfect the Mirror board. Enmity. Mm. I guess so. Sure. Might as well. Well, you might think about Mirror Entity, but with the way that Dog has structured his deck with Zombie Chows as well as uh, uh, Dark Headless. I don't know. It, I guess he seems like he values Magma Rager. Uh, if he had played Magma Rager, it means he values Magma Rager over whatever Dog could give him. <laughs> And Brand Bronze Spirit is not the worst, but it does it is it does have the potential to just get traded into. Blood Imp, Zombie Chow, or Reliquary Seeker. Wow, these are pretty poor. Yeah, they're okay. I suppose Zombie Chow with this deck is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Well Jazz gonna be fine here if he picks up a flame waker and like a uh, arcane collect or something, but Dr. Boom, not great, as it will just insta-die to Big Game Hunter. Yeah. Big Game will actually double-tap Dr. Boom. If Dr. Boom somehow <laughs> refused to die, um, <laughs> he would get killed right afterwards. Two bullets. Yep. Oh man, is that the sickest flame strike you've ever seen, or what? Yeah, Dog's got to be really confident that he doesn't have flame strike. I mean, I don't even know if it would matter. He spent his whole turn using flame strike, and then Dog would just like reload his board with strong stuff. Frostbolt. So next turn he's gonna have some stuff to do with Flame Waker, but I don't think he can really afford to wait till next turn. He's dead, right? If you don't do more than just ping six. I mean, I guess he can try and he can kill the zombie child with the ping to bring himself back up, but 
Looks like he's gonna have to start stopping some of this damage now. Ooh, that was good. Yeah, stopped a lot of damage on the board. He's got nine and zero in hand. So it looks like uh, Jab will continue on, but do you really want to? I mean, with two Magma Ragers, you might just want to end it, is what I'm yeah. saying here. Magma Ragers are the cousin to the Flame Waker, the <laughs> terrible cousin. Yeah. Magma Ranger must be so excited about that new Paladin card. That buffs only one health minions of Divine Shield. Yeah. Finally, some preference over Ice Rager. <laughs> I think some people would still choose Ice Rager. Well, That's then. a lot of boom bots. Yes, it is. Now Flame Waker just could kill you. Now, I couldn't kill you, but... I think Jab will actually way. choose to uh, just pass here. Okay. He doesn't die to the board, does he? No, he's at five. Draxus can't be played. Oh, Shadow Flame. Does that work? No, he's... That would be a uh, 13 mana potential lethal there. Oh! Got him! <laughs> wow. Oh, man. The excitement for the boom bots. That's you know what? Uh... I might miss the boom bots. I mean, I'm, it's kind of like good riddance for Dr. Boom. But why can't we just have some good old boom bots? They should just make boom bot a card. Yeah. One mana, one one with that death rattle is actually one mana. Whew. Those are one mana cards. I think that's a two mana card. I'm looking it up. No, 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 no. Like I think it's like if it goes back to your hand, I think it's one mana card. But I think like if it was, if it was by itself, it mm -hmm. like if it was its own card, I think it should be a two mana card. I think you're right on that. It is currently a one mana card though. Yeah. I want it's it. Like if if, dark, if Boombots get vanished. Or sapped. Look at that hand from Dog. Oh, man. Oh, boy. That is pretty good, but this hand does actually rely on him drawing heavy cards. That's not that heavy. I mean, you could just draw another Living Roots or something, and then you realize you don't actually have that much. Actually, it's still pretty good. I mean, Drew of the Claw is, is, is quite solid here. Yeah. Oh, so it's Pile of Shredder. Yep. Especially since this fits the curve better. All right. So, uh, uh, probably we'll be seeing a monster from Battle for, from Jab here. Reporting for duty. And just kill off some, uh, uh, some extra minions. When the pilot shredders are on their own, they're um, they're more e a little bit easier to deal with. Yeah. Jab thinks about using a coin for noble sacrifice, but seems you know, reasonable. He's probably not gonna need that. Yeah, I wouldn't have hated it. Time to go face. Picks up the Savage Roar. Ooh, okay, so opts to Hero Power down one of these 1-1s one -ones, as opposed to playing the Druid of the Call. Wants to get that Shade out early, which has a lot of merit. Because with Savage Roar, that's only going to grow and get you closer to potential lethal later in the game. Ooh, there we go. This is the, um, the Secret Paladin with the Ragnaros and Double Keeper with them on flavor. That's not too bad. Dog really was just looking for extra cards to uh, supplement his uh, his ramp, and um, wow, having the extra draw there was a really big deal. I mean, combo next turn, you just charge face here. Yeah, well, the thing is, is your opponent has coins still. So what happens if Jab coins out a mysterious challenger or plays a Lotheb? Can you afford to not skip your turn, but? play it make a weaker turn to set up for a lethal 
I think you, you can, can actually just play it as taunt and then play the two on ones. Yeah. Looks like that's what's gonna happen here. Yeah. Because the shade with the combo next turn alone is 20 damage. I mean, I don't, I don't see it right now. What I see is a, a dead paladin. Yeah, it's looking that way. Lothab's gonna s stop it for one turn. In order to save himself on the next. Holy cow. Seven mana. Draw Ancient of Lore. When you only have combo in hand. <laughs> Not that it mattered. Because <laughs> uh, um, he would have still won even if uh, Noble Sacrifice was played. Even if a uh, Mysterious Challenger was played, he was still won because he could have just attacked in with his face. Ooh, getting the shade damage in now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's any chance here. Nope. He is dead. And that means that dog is going to beat Jab 3 to 0. There you and go. Move on to the uh, playoff stage, which will happen on Sunday. Yep. Wow. Dog's going to be was... the, the first Hello, seed. Uh, Jab will be um, with a 1 and 1 record, meaning that we will have to go to the losers match. One of the losers sit, currently sitting at 0 1 will get a win. Be tied with Jeb, and we'll have the deciding match to see who is going to be the second seed from Group A today. I'm really impressed with Dog's deck choices and just yeah. his overall play. Um, it's a really bold move to bring both Handlock and Midrange Paladin. Uh, maybe he looked at the players, or maybe he, those are just decks that he is comfortable with. We still haven't seen the Warrior deck, it was banned both times, but if you watch Dog's stream, he plays Control Warrior a lot more than he plays Patron, so probably that. I think it's solid play against uh, Druid players, which is literally everybody right now. So I, I really like it. I think the, the decision was, was very clear and very good. Um, a lot of people say that when you bring a counter setup, uh, often you just bring decks that are too weak and you end up just losing because the strong decks are too strong regardless of the counters. But, um, I mean, he's bringing Druid. He's bringing decks that are clearly good enough. And uh, the strategy has absolutely worked out uh, terrifically so far. Yeah, it definitely has. And so, like you said, Jab will move to the Cider match, which we'll have in um, right after the, the lower match. Mm -hmm. And looking forward to seeing Dog in the playoff stage uh, when we get there on Sunday. Of course, he'll be playing, since he's the first player to move on from this group, he'll be playing against the second seed from Group B, which will happen tomorrow. Uh, but before we jump into that lower match, we are going to have to go to a break. Uh, during the break, make sure you guys head over once again to the website, enter in to win your Cyber Power PC. And uh, geico.onog.gg, you can see it right in the middle of the screen down there. But we're going to go to a quick break, so don't go anywhere, guys. Uh, the continuation of Group A for future tournament number two will continue right after this.